Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Jae Dong No, the chair of this session. So welcome to the final day session of this workshop. So uh, we have uh, three invited speakers, uh, Naoto Shuaishi and Smilan Demaji and Takayoro Sakawa. And the first talk will be given by Naoto Shuaishi with the title of uh, Some Anomalous Normalization Process. OK, uh, let's welcome Naoto. Thank you for introducing. I'm Naoto Shiraishi from Gakushin University. Uh, today, I'll introduce several uh, two uh, anomalous models uh, which show the anomalous sound modulation phenomena. Uh, my talk is based on these papers, so if you're interested in, please see these papers. This is the outline of my talk. First, I'll explain the background of my research. As we know in our daily life, if we leave a macroscopic system at no equilibrium and leave this, then this system relaxes to the unique equilibrium state, which is called summarization. And it is known that summarization also occurs in many body pure quantum systems. And almost all quantum minimal systems show summarization. However, it is also known that some quantum minimal systems do not summarize. Examples are integral systems and local systems. So it is natural to ask what determines the presence or absence of summarization. This is the center of a question a problem in this field. And my talk, uh, <coughs> my two topics uh, concerned on this problem. Uh, <coughs> my talk uh, consists of two parts. In the first part, we uh, explain the general framework embedding method uh, which construct an uh, uh, infinitely many non-integrable systems which violate the ETH. This is related to quantum many body scores. This is uh, which is also topics in this conference. In the second part, we show the undecidability of summarization. So summarization in the most general form is shown to be uh, <coughs> undecidable. So not solvable. Now, we move to the first part. Uh, towards the central problem, uh, ETH, or eigenstrom summation hypothesis, is considered to be a key notion to determine the presence or absence of summarization. Here, uh, we say that a state Psi is thermal with respect to an observable A, if the expectation value of A in this state Psi is equal to its equilibrium value. Here, rho mc uh, means the microcanonical state. And ETH, uh, which is abbreviation of eigenstate summarization hypothesis, claims that all energy eigenstates are summer with respect to all microscopic observables. If a system satisfies the ETH, then uh, <laughs> this system uh, is proven to summarize. And based on new micro simulations, uh, these are expected that first, all non integrable and no localized systems satisfy the ETH. And second, all summarizing systems uh, satisfy the ETH. If these two expectations are true, then ETH determines the summarization. This is a very simple picture. However, these expectations are unfortunately not true. There are infinitely many uh, families of Hamiltonian, which is non-integrable, non-localized, and summarize it, but violates ETH. We first uh, provide a very general uh, framework and then proceed a uh, concrete example. Our general framework is um, embedding method. In embedding method is a systematic way to construct non-integral Hamiltonian, which violates ETH. Let uh, T be a target state space, which consists of matrix product state uh, <coughs> in most cases. And these states are <coughs> the states which we want to embed as thermal energy eigenstate of non-integrable Hamiltonian. Let a PI be the local position operator. And if the state is 
in Psi, this projection operator gives zero. Then using this uh, PI, we can construct Hamiltonian as this with arbitrary local Hamiltonian small hi. Then by this construction, this Hamiltonian has the target state T as its thermal energy eigenstates. But the state in T uh, <coughs> not uh, irrelevant to hi, so these states are in general non-thermal uh, non energy eigenstates. And in addition, owing to the arbitrarity of hi, this Hamiltonian is in general non-integrable. So uh, by this construction, uh, this Hamiltonian is uh, non-integrable, but uh, with <coughs> violating the ETH. So this is a count, uh, <coughs> count example to the ETH, and embedding method provides infinitely many such Hamiltonians. But uh, this explanation is highly abstract. So we take an example uh, of spin one chain. Consider spin one chain with periodic boundary condition. We set projection operator PZI, which takes zero if uh, spin SZ at site I is plus minus one, but it uh, gives one if the spin SZ is zero. Using this, we first construct a trial Hamiltonian as this. Here, small HI is again arbitrary local Hamiltonian. We remark that the support of HI is not restricted to the site I. For example, this operator uh, whose support is the site I minus one and I plus one, but uh, we can set this operator as HI. To see the significance of this Hamiltonian, uh, we consider how H trial act on this state phi. H trial has a local Hamiltonian HI, but HI cannot act on phi because uh, the projection operator PIZ erase this state. In contrast, the uh, local Hamiltonian HI minus one can act on this state because in this case, the state phi passes through this uh, projection operator. Now we set uh, the state target state space T as a L power of two states whose uh, spins are plus minus one. Then these states are energy eigenstates of H trial with zero energy. Because if the state is in T, then a uh, projection operator PIZ gives zero for all I. So by uh, drawing the density of a state of this Hamiltonian, most of states are summer, so we have this type of density of states. But at the e equal zero, there is very uh, sharp peak, heavy degeneracy. This is the L's power of two non-thermal states in T. These states are non-thermal because these states are irrelevant to HI. So this Hamiltonian has exponentially heavy degeneracy. But if uh, one may feel that uh, this such a uh, heavy degeneracy is not uh, realistic, but we can easily resolve this degeneracy. We can add uh, another term, H prime. Here, H prime is the arbitrary Hamiltonian acting only on uh, spin one and minus one. So if the state is in T, then H psi keeps this state in T. And by adding these two, we set the <coughs> Hamiltonian desired one. Now we plot the density of state of this Hamiltonian. Then uh, this is again a summer state, but the state in T appears here. Now the degeneracy is resolved. But the state in T are still non-thermal energy eigenstate because uh, these states are independent of HI. So uh, this is a violation of ETH. And here uh, we discuss uh, the entanglement entropy of non thermal energy eigenstates. Entanglement entropy shows area law if H psi is integrable. And it shows weak volume law if H psi is non-integrable. We can confirm uh, 
the violation of ETH also uh, by numerical simulation. We plot uh, density of an observable versus energy density for each energy eigenstate. Here, uh, there exists some thermal average, and most state, most energy eigenstates are uh, around this thermal average, but there exists uh, several energy eigenstates which deviates from the thermal average. And, and these states are, in fact, the states in T. So the states in T are indeed non thermal energy eigenstates. Numerical simulation confirms this. Naoto? Yeah? There is a question in chat. Okay. So, what definition of non integrable are you using? That's the question. Uh, non integrable. <laughs> uh, this is not a. Uh, mm, there are various defi uh, definitions, I think. So, and there is no uh, <coughs> decisive answer to the definition of quantum integrability and non integrability. But as far as uh, we expect that, uh, if this HI is arbitrary, so it's a very, very complicated terms, then uh, this, uh, I think this Hamiltonian satisfies any definition of non-integrability. For example, absence of local constant quantity, or for example, the level of spacing shows the Wigner Dyson distribution or uh, many, many other definitions. So in this <laughs> case, um, we, uh, in fact, we do not prove uh, the non-integrability rigorously. Uh, we can show the, <coughs> the absence of uh, a violation of ETH rigorously, but we do not prove the violation of uh, non-integrability rigorously. We only uh, <coughs> argue that, and this is highly plausible, this Hamiltonian is non-integrable because HPI is completely arbitrary. And you can use any definition of non-integrability as you like. OK. OK, I, I think you can proceed. If there is another question, then I will inform you. OK. Now uh, we move to the dynamics. We first summarize the dynamics of this uh, system. In macroscopic system, uh, this system summarizes. But uh, it shows a novel type of initial state dependent pre summarization. In contrast, if the system size is very small, the initial state may not summarize. We first examine what type of initial state summarizes. Of course, uh, of course if the initial state had all spin plus minus one, then it never summarizes. But then what happens if almost all spins are plus minus one? but there exists a single spin zero. To say a result, a single spin zero suffices to trigger summarization. To see this uh, fact, we regard the spin zero as a defect and we consider the dynamics of the defect. Suppose that the site one is a defect at the initial state. Then local Hamiltonian H1 can act on this state and the Sites L and 2 can become defect. Then local Hamiltonian HL and H2 can act on this state, and site L minus 1 and 3 can become defect. And uh, repeatedly, all uh, defect can spread all over the system and it triggered uh, summarization. So uh, the important question is whether we can prepare uh, the initial <laughs> state with exactly no defect. At uh, zero temperature, it is possible, but at finite temperature, it is not, because uh, summer noise inevitably induces a defect. And because all uh, physically plausible experiments are performed at finite temperature, physically plausible initial state inevitably contain defect. So uh, physically plausible initial state sum will summarize, which can be confirmed by, uh, also by numerical simulation. Summarization indeed occurred without ETH. But if the system size is very small and temperature is low, then summarization may disappear. In this case, the stationary state is characterized by non-local GGE, generated Gibbs ensemble. This generated Gibbs ensemble is given as this. Usually, GGE uh, is described with local conserved quantity, 
But in this case, non-local conserved quantity appeared, which characterized the state space T. In fact, the state space can be decomposed into two space, T and outside of T. And uh, relaxation occurs in these two sectors independently. So uh, <coughs> this uh, as a strong uh, time average is characterized by GGE. We remark that usually uh, sectors with local concert quantity only matter macroscopic observables. And sectors with non-local concert quantity uh, does not matter to macroscopic physics. But in this system, this is not true. This is the interesting point. And even in a macroscopic system, we can see the signature of T. If the initial density of defect is very low, we see a novel type of pre-summarization. Here, the pre summer plateau is characterized by uh, the sector T. Why this type of pre-summarization occurs? Because if uh, the initial defect is very few, then as we explained, the defect spreads, but before spreading, the relaxation only by H prime uh, only in T takes place first, which triggers pre summarization. And this phenomenon is very similar to the quantum manipulable skirt, which a uh, quantum manipulable skirt is initial state dependent long lived oscillation, which is observed in the experiment of UW atom. And recently, uh, PXP model which is a well-known effective Hamiltonian of this uh, squared system, is shown to be non-integrable, but some energy eigenstates are exactly solvable. And from the viewpoint of embedded Hamiltonian, this um, mapped version of this PXP model is also understood as an embedded Hamiltonian. And in this viewpoint, this is an embedded Hamiltonian which embeds AKLT state. And there are many, many other uh, skirts Hamiltonian. And I think that most of the Hamiltonian can be understood with this framework. Now we summarize the, my talk of part one. We uh, introduced embedding method, uh, which construct a non-integrable system violating the ETH. The key idea is a subspace with non-local conserved quantity. Now we move to the second part. Undecidability of summarization. We uh, <coughs> examine uh, the central problem. How do, uh, we examine the hardness of this central problem from the viewpoint of theoretical computer science. So this is a completely different approach. Usually we just solve this problem. But in our approach, we examine the hardness of this problem. To formulate the, uh, the problem, we uh, write the program in the form of decision program. Here we consider the spin S system in one dimension. The initial state is a product state as this. This uh, subscript zero is not a typo. And the observable, we restrict the observable to the shift sum of arbitrary one body observable. An example is the magnetization. Then um, a shift invariant and the nearest neighbor interaction Hamiltonian is given. And our task is to decide whether this initial state summarizes with respect to this observable or not. This problem is very simple because initial state is a product state and almost uniform, I'm sorry. And the observable is also one body and Hamiltonian is shift invariant and nearest neighbor. However, even in this simple setup, this problem is undecidable. So no general algorithm or no general procedure decide the presence or absence of summarization. But before going to the proof, we first uh, see uh, the definition of a decidable and undecidable and several uh, notions in theoretical computer science. We see that a decision program is decidable if there exists a procedure which correctly answers yes or no for any input. Of course, as <laughs> problem is solved uh, in the form of theorem, this is decidable. And we remark that this uh, procedure can take extremely long time. So combinatorial optimization problem, 
which is known uh, to the very hard problem in practice. But uh, because brute force method can solve this problem, optimization problem is also decidable. And if there is no such procedure, which always this, uh, gives correct answer, then this problem is uh, called undecidable. The notion of undecidability is related to Gadel's incompleteness theorem. Now, uh, OK. So do you consider the infinite size the system in the beginning, or your uh, argument? Yeah, in, uh, we, in fact, uh, precise, um, I haven't explained. A precise uh, form is that we take, we finally take the sum like limit, and we want to know the <laughs> fate of the uh, summarization in this sum like limit. The sum like limit is inevitable in this formulation. OK, thank you. Thank you. OK, so the precise statement of decision problem is as follows. System is one dimensional with periodic boundary condition. Dimension local Hilbert space is D, and this is fixed. We do not take the uh, uh, infinite dimension limit. D, D is fixed. An observable is, again, the one-body observable, arbitrary one-body observable. An initial state is uh, in this form. And these uh, quantities are fixed, arbitrarily and given and fixed. The input of this uh, problem is a local Hamiltonian H and target value S. Local Hamiltonian is, uh, <coughs> for, can take a form of the matrix with d square times d square because uh, this Hamiltonian is uh, local uh, nearest neighbor and shift invariant. So on the two time, uh, two <coughs> d square times d square matrix characterize the Hamiltonian. And we also put a promise. We put a promise that the long time average A bar of A denoted by A bar is close to the ester with error epsilon one or far from ester with margin epsilon two. We put this promise. And uh, our claim is that for any observable A and any initial state uh, phi zero phi one, whether this system relaxes to a given value ester under given Hamiltonian H is undecidable. If ester is uh, <laughs> equilibrium value, then this statement undecidability of summarization. And because we can easily set ester to the uh, summer average, uh, in this talk, we uh, treat undecidability of relaxation. Now we move to the construction. But uh, before going to the construction, we introduce several notions in theoretical computer science. We employed Turing machine as a computation system. Turing machine is a very simple uh, computational system, which have a control unit with internal states and this leads uh, infinite uh, one bit in the infinite uh, sequence of uh, bits. And the control unit reads a single cell and change its own state and or realize the state in the cell in the sequence in the tape and or move one side, one cell left or right. One may feel that a Turing machine is very simple and primitive, but there exists universal reversible Turing machine, URTM, which can emulate any possible Turing machine. Further, universal reversible Turing machine can emulate almost all our computational system, such as C++ or Python, or that kind of very complicated uh, computer system. So uh, Church and Turing declare that what is computation? is what Turing machine can compute. This is not a theorem because this is just declared, but it is very a plausible uh, declaration and we accept this thesis. Then uh, we next introduce uh, one decision problem, halting problem of Turing machine. In this decision problem, input is an input for a given universal Turing machine. And the problem is, does this Turing machine with this input halt at some time or does not halt and move forever? Turing proves that this problem is undecidable. So there is no procedure 
to uh, deciding whether the Turing machine holds or not. And the proof idea of uh, undecided bit of summarization is that we construct a, a proper Hamiltonian uh, such that this system summarizes if and only if the corresponding Turing machine holds. So uh, because the halting program is undecidable, summarization is also undecidable. Now uh, we uh, write the strategy of the construction. We first construct a proper classical Turing machine, which has different value of A between halting case and non halting case. Then we emulate this classical machine by quantum manifold system. So we first construct a classical machine. This classical machine has two types of cells, M cells and A cells. M cells store the input code X uh, for the universal Turing machine and also serve as the working space of universal Turing machine. M cell consists of three layers. A cells are responsible for changing the expectation value of A in case of halting and not halting. This is a schematic of the classical system. There is A cells and M cells. And M cells consist of three layers. The first layer emulates the classical universal Turing machine. And the layer, uh, second and third layers consist of spin one half, which possess uh, the information of uh, input, input bits sequence. This is the input for universal Turing machine. The dynamics is uh, in three steps. In the first step, the first Turing machine decodes the input code X from third, second and third layer. Second step, the second Turing machine fits the universal run with input X. If second Turing machine does not hold, nothing happened. Value of A is zero. But if second Turing machine holds, then uh, the state of A cells are flipped, which triggers uh, the value of A becomes finite. In the first step, uh, how to decode the input code X. We introduce real number beta whose decimal expansion is equal to the input code X with zero and bit. And we set the relative frequency of one in layer two as beta. First Turing machine estimates the relative frequency of one in second layer and outputs the result relative frequency to first layer. What is the role of the third layer? Third layer determines how many bits the first Turing machine should read. In a third layer, almost all cells are set to zero and one rarely appears. And a third Turing machine reads the cells until the first one appears. Because the one appears very rarely, a first Turing machine can read sufficiently many bits to estimate the relative frequency. And then in the second step, second Turing machine fitted the universal run with this input X. At this time, uh, the value of A, A cells are set to A1 equals zero. And if and only if the second Turing machine holds, then uh, the se state of A cells are flipped to A2, which had finite expectation value. So this is the flowchart we show again. Now uh, we emulate this classical system by qu quantum Hamiltonian. Our original program is, uh, takes, is as follows. State is fixed at uh, this form and local Hamiltonian is input. But instead, we consider this modified program. Local Hamiltonian is fixed at proper one and state in this form is input. By applying a single site local unitary tr transformation, this modified program is mapped onto the original program. So uh, we treat this modified program. The basic structure of the Hamiltonian is Feynman type Hamiltonian without clock. If the classical dynamics gives a state P to state Q, then we have quantum Hamiltonian as this. Here, uh, this uh, ket to cubra p is forward dynamics and its conjugate uh, gives backward dynamics. We uh, give an example of Feynman type type Hamiltonian. If classical Turing machine in this state 
evolves to this state, then quantum Hamiltonian should have this term, 0q4 ket and q20 bra. Uh, in this construction, uh, this Hamiltonian can become local, nearest neighbor. This is the important point. And after, uh, <laughs> by specifying the classical Turing machine, we can uh, solve the, all the state at, at the steps. Then by denoting the state at the end step of the classical Turing machine by Xn, we have the following effective description of Hamiltonian. Then now we can solve all the energy eigenstates and energy eigenvalues because this Hamiltonian is totally diagonal or essentially the same as the sing, uh, <coughs> lattice, one, one dimensional lattice system with single particle only with hopping. This is easily solved. Now uh, we see the schematics of the structure of the state space. This uh, one, two uh, it are the state as the first step, second step, and M step. We uh, <coughs> denote the M step uh, such that, uh, that here as the M step, second Turing machine halts. Then the flipping starts. And at the M plus L state, flipping ends. And the whole dynamics stops. At the initial state, uh, the state is localized to the state one. We draw uh, the graph of the value of A with respect to uh, each steps. So after M step, the value is zero and value of A increases. By taking some like limit, almost all uh, this graph becomes almost linear. So the expectation value of A becomes around a half of the A2 in some like limit. This is the finite value. Until now, we have considered uh, the state of the initial state, of state of the system such that uh, the initial state is a computational basis state. But the actual initial state is a superposition of computational basis state. And the dynamics is also a quantum superposition. Turing machine is also a quantum superposition, depending on each initial state. The actual initial state is given as this. A cells and M cells are superposition. And M cells also take a superposition of one and zero in second and third layers. Uh, <coughs> we explain what happened in second layer as an example. The state of second layer is expanded as this. And due to the row of, non row of large numbers, uh, the weight of states uh, such that the relative frequency of one is far from beta has arbitrarily small uh, probability amplitude. In other words, almost all states uh, with uh, finite, uh, <coughs> finite uh, probability density is, uh, has its relative frequency of one around beta. And similar discussion hold for the type of cell, SLM cell, and the in layer three. Now we summarize our construction. There exists a local uh, Hamiltonian uh, after one site, single site unitary transformation, which possesses the information of the input X, input code X in the transition coefficient, such that if and only if the universal Turing machine holds with this input, long time average of A is finite. And if it does not halt, then value of A is zero. And because the halting problem is undecidable, value of A after relaxation is undecidable. One may wondering what happened if we numerically simulate this system. So we finally draw a schematics of the what happens in numerical simulation. We consider the case that the second Turing machine halts after a very long time. Then before halting, the value of A appears to converge to zero. But after halting, this value suddenly deviates from zero and go to the value half of A2. So finite size scaling does not work in this system. And unfortunately, the necessary size 
uh, for halting is known to be uncomputable. So and this uh, size, necessary size, can become arbitrarily large. So numerical simulation cannot <laughs> capture this phenomenon. Now we summarize part two. For initial state and observables, presence or absence of relaxation to ester or uh, summarization is unsightable. Key idea is that there exists a shift invariant local interaction Hamiltonian, where the presence or absence of summarization in system and zero one output of any computational task are parallel. So there exists some correspondence in this system. This is a summary of the talk. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you for the nice presentation. And the now session is open for question, comment, or discussions. Okay. Hi, I wanted to ask if I may. Could you comment? One moment, one, mo one moment. There is one, uh, uh, Martin raised the hand. So we uh, first machine and then I'll. Okay, I, I have short question about the first part of your, uh, of your talk about the Hamiltonian. Yep. Does this Hamiltonian has non-degenerate spectrum or there are degeneracies? Uh, this uh, Hamiltonian, uh, we can construct the Hamiltonian fit, uh, which has a non-degeneracy. Non uh, of course, uh, because of the transcendental invariance, there must exist some uh, kind of trivial degeneracy. But except such kind of degeneracy, uh, we can construct a no degeneracy by these methods. Thank you. And very simple example is that the, if we restrict to the target space T, uh, target space T uh, to only a single state, then of course uh, there is no degeneracy. If uh, <coughs> We set we set HI properly. So maybe one more very short question. In uh, you introduced in this first part also this uh, non-local uh, conserved quantities, and you said they are important. So yep. my question is, I, I missed this point. So every Hamiltonian has some non-local conserved quantities. Yes. What is specific in these quantities that they uh, that they violate TH? Yes. Maybe this is important point as usually non-local cons there must exist but, uh, infinitely many non-local consequences of in any Hamiltonian. A simple example is the projection operator onto the energy yeah. eigenstate. Yeah. So there is various non-local constant quantity, but um, in usual systems, non-local constant quantity does not matter. But exceptionally in this system, a kind of non-local constant quantity matters. Of course, no, uh, not all non-local constant quantity matters. Only some you, kind of very specific do you, do form. Do you explain of in simple words why? Why? Uh, well, the reason is that the, because the state space is separated by non-local constant quantity, okay. and this is this structure is, in, I think, maybe general. But the important point is that the macroscopic observable, uh, average of macroscopic observables in this sector and out, outside of this sector has different expectation value. Usually, uh, these two have the same expectation value. So uh, non-local constant quantity does not matter in general, in usual, but uh, our system uh, matters because these two have different value. Okay, thank you. Okay, then uh, Pablo, sorry for the inconvenience. Now it's, it's your time. No, sorry, I was not used to the <laughs> stuff. I wanted to ask, could you please explain a bit more about your, like in the invisibility problem and you were explaining something with the system size scaling. Could you comment a bit more oh, on okay. that? Okay, uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, I mean, this is better than just a schematic, but okay, yeah. This one? Yes, could you explain a bit more what, what you meant here? Like this is scaling, so you, with the scaling with system size and then you have this kind of Sudden goes up. Could you explain a bit more what you were? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, if of uh, in this case, uh, we consider the case that the necessary uh, second Turing machine halt, but it takes very long steps. In other words, the system uh, the system uh, needs very uh, many uh, working space. Otherwise, the uh, Turing machine cannot uh, halt. 
we consider this type of uh, Turing machine. Mm -hmm. uni and the universal Turing machine uh, uh, usually have this type of behavior. Then if the size, system size insufficient, uh, we, uh, <coughs> we incorrectly regard that uh, this Turing machine uh, does not hold because the size is insufficient. But in fact, the Turing machine holds at very, in a very large working space. So uh, if the size becomes sufficient, then uh, this um, value deviates from the <coughs> zero because uh, now uh, the flipping starts. But uh, maybe this expression is not good, but uh, <coughs> this is what uh, Turing, the working, um, how to, but the simple reason is that the working space of the second Turing machine is insufficient in this region. And so before, Halting, uh, for example, the Turing machine uh, passes the periodic boundary condition, so the computation is, is computation flows. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe my explanation is not good. Now, uh, uh, I think. Uh, mm. I think it's better to have some more uh, intuitive feeling on your second problem. So yeah. you define the desired ability with some specific initial condition, right? Yes. Some, some initial condition. The, is it uh, crucial in your proof? I mean, uh... how... Oh, yes, uh, but uh, we fix one, uh, but this uh, state itself is arbitrary, as we explained. And so we should, uh, in our definition, we consider the sum summarization with respect to A. So, yes. uh, <laughs> but uh, both observable and initial states are arbitrary. Any observable, any initial state. So, and after fixing the observable and initiated arbitrary one, we give a proper Hamiltonian. We can construct proper Hamiltonian. But you have some very specific product state. Say, uh, uh, yes, uh, very specific because we consider that this is very simple one, but uh, this construction is very specific. Uh, I think um, maybe it can be extended to a simple MPS type. Our result can be extended to MPS state, but if you we want to extend more, I don't know how is it true or not. But in general, we cannot write a very complicated initial state in a concise form. And uh, but uh, to, but uh, I should say that uh, our uh, proof relies on the form of this initial state. Mm -hmm. This is correct. But there may exist several ways to extend the result to um, a little more general initial state. For example, there exists um, a kind of MPS state. I hope. <laughs> this, I haven't shown this. And uh, for the uh, XXG chain, we, everybody says that XXG chain is, uh, does not thermalize, but XXG chain with this next nearest neighbor interaction thermalized. This uh, everybody believes, but yes, but, uh, uh, of course, uh, we uh, do not exclude the possibility that uh, some specific in some specific systems, some mm -hmm. the presence of absence of summarization is uh, proven. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, uh, yes, so your so claim is that there is no general rule to yeah, determine. no general theorem. So, for example, if if there exists, someone hopes that there is a very uh, magical theorem that. Uh, for any given Hamiltonian, we have a very simple way to decide this Hamiltonian, okay, decide, uh, summarize, this Hamilton, oh, not summarize. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, there is no such theorem. There is no this such is a, Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is our frame. And can you have some, uh, can you show us some uh, 
example that cannot be proven to be thermalized or not thermalized. Uh, this is just uh, what the Hamiltonian, what we construct. Uh, that is what you construct. This is an example of the undecidable case. Mm -hmm. So there exists one Hamiltonian, uh, one fam a family of fam Hamiltonian, uh, <coughs> such that uh, we cannot decide the presence of some summarization. So general theorem, we do, we cannot hope general theorem because there exists at least one exception. And is this question on thermalization is also uh, related to the the criterion for the integrability? Uh, this, um, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know and I'm not sure. Um, so everybody is saying, of uh, course, some, some if, model is integral and some model is not integral, but actually I, I don't know the exact mathematical definition for the yeah, integral. Of course, uh, in system, um, integrability, the, of course, if the system is integrable, uh, we know that this system doesn't summarize. So integrable systems uh, does not uh, <coughs> enter this uh, field. But uh, so what my system is integrable, no integrable or not. Uh, so I think my system is a highly complicated, no integrable system. But uh, at present, I do not see a uh, clear connectivity between the integrability and our system. Okay. Is there any other question? If not, actually I have one more question. Okay. But in the first part, you introduced some uh, uh, exceptional case to the ETH. Yeah. And, but it, your construction model relies on some projection operator. So the projection means you uh, impose some kind of constraint on the model, right? Yeah. So, yes, so, yes, this is similar, uh, also called a kind of a kinetic, kinetically, co uh, kinetically yes, constrained right. model. For example, and this is discussed in the field, field of grassy physics. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is, that, that, is that inevitable for this type of scar type uh, states? I mean, this uh, perfect constraint. Constraint, but in fact, the square system uh, does not uh, take the this form. Uh, apparently, but in fact, by uh, twisting or by uh, refining the description, we can delight this form in uh, several cases. One example is the a PXP model. For example, PXP, yeah, I do this. Oops, I'm sorry, this is different. Eckert, uh, so in this, we uh, by applying uh, proper uh, mapping or pro proper state transformation, PXP model is mapped to the uh, to a kind of embedding Hamiltonian which embed AKLT state. Of course, AKLT state is also mapped onto the solvable state in this mapping. So, uh, of course, uh, this form is very specific, but several Hamiltonian implicitly use uh, implicitly written in the form of projection. And I think there are known example is, in fact, uh, apparently uh, there uh, this Hamilton, uh, this, uh, the Scarlet Hamilton, some of Scarlet Hamiltonian apparently uses the apparently uses no projection, but in fact uses some projection. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. If there is no further question, then I think it's. Uh, it's a good time to thank Nauta again. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.